Tapi suka yang mana? Enggak, Bapak itu kurang. Bapak itu kurang. Kurang dari menata untuk mobilnya kan. Banyaknya masih. Ini berarti udah udah live di YouTube ya Pak ya? Coba dilihat dulu YouTube Prodi Adam. Biar saya cek ya Pak. Bu Bu Fitri Bu Bu ada Bu Fitri situ ada. Fitri kebetulan lagi ke kasir Pak. Oh. Kalian di mana nih? Ah udah Pak udah udah live Pak. Nah, nah, maksudnya gini Adam, Adam, kan ini ya. ini udah mau masuk. Maksudnya tolong dikas- nanti Bu Fitri kasih tahu ya, bilangin kayaknya tunggu sebentar ya. Ini nih ada Bu Fitri. Ya Pak. Nah, Bu Bu Fitri, tolong sampaikan ke Dokter Ailinya tunggu suruh tunggu sebentar ya Bu ya. Boleh boleh. Dia soalnya udah request minta masuk Bu. Oh, boleh boleh. Ah ya, nanti setelah ini selesai uh, coba baru kita bu- uh, kita konfirm dia ibu ya. Oke, sip pak. Halo Adam. Adam. Iya pak. Saya coba lagi ke YouTube-nya ya. Kamu kira-kira bisa masih bisa kita masih bisa streaming nggak? Oke. Okay. Sebentar ya. Saya saya jadikan lagi kamu host ya. Ya. Ini saya sambil cek YouTube-nya juga nih pak. Oke. Okay. Nah, saya udah jadikan kamu host, Adam. Masih connect nggak dia di YouTube? Oke, kalau di Zoom-nya masih live. Saya coba di YouTube-nya. Oke, masih sih, Pak. Masih ya? Iya, Pak. Masih connect Pak di YouTube. Kalau di Zoom-nya bisa Pak, bisa bisa. Masih connect ya, Adam ya. Udah saya ya, opor kamu. Gitu. Adam saya opor ke kamu ya. Iya Pak. Ya kamu jadi hostnya ya. Oke. Okay. Oke, okay, nanti tinggal ikutin arah Bu Aran Bu Fitri aja ya. Nih saya ini nanti ya. Kamu udah Baik, bisa konfirm orang kan? Oke, okay, bisa Pak. Udah bisa ya? Udah bisa. Oke. Okay. Oke, nih Miss Alia udah mau masuk. Gak usah. Mahasiswa dulu atau Miss Alia dulu yang masuk? Mahasiswa jadi suruh masuk dulu nih. Gak apa-apa. Bisa. Halo Adam. Adam. Pak. Nanti kalau ada ini di chat ke saya ya, jangan di sini, tapi di chat uh, WhatsApp ya. Oke okay, Pak, siap. Oke, okay. saya tinggal ya Adam ya. Baik Pak. Oke. Okay. Terima kasih Pak Tommy. Ya Bu.
Tanya.
Hello, good morning to everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Morning, sir. Morning. Morning, morning. morning. morning Miss. Morning. morning. Good morning, Miss Alie. Hi, hi. Good morning. Hello. How are you today? Hi, I'm good. I'm nice good. Nice to you again after our last meeting in Malaysia. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, before we start our lecture, uh, Miss Vicianti will say something to all of participants. So I will let Miss Vicianti to, and I give you time for your conversation. Morning, Miss. Morning. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam kita semua. Baik di pagi hari yang cerah ini kita melaksanakan kuliah tamu dari Asia Pacific University, di mana ini perkuliahan yang kita apa, program yang kita lakukan selama musim pandemi ya terima kasih saya ucapkan kepada Miss Alie yang telah meluangkan waktunya e, baik saya bermohon kepada anak-anak semua untuk serius mengikuti perkuliahan ini ya oke baik selanjutnya baik, baik. Uh, silakan lagi kepada ada silakan ada Okay, thank you for Miss Vicianti. And I want to say thanks to Miss Ali who agreed to take the time to become a speaker in this public lecture. And I will say again, nice to meet you again after our last meeting when we are in, even in Malaysia last year, we were an APU and fortunately we can provide to replay program in Indonesia because this pandemic we can invite you and your student to come in Indonesia for the program. I'm sorry, Miss. <laughs> no problem. Okay, Miss Ali, today we are with the student from third semester student in the Petroleum Engineer Study Program, Faculty of Engineering at UIR. And the theme of the public lecture today is about statigraphy. And main topic is sediment, sedimentasi. Schedule of event is giving the material from Miss Ali. And at the end, we will have a question and answer session. And for our participant, we need to know Miss Ali, full name is Nur Ali Sofiana Biti Serasa. And today, Miss Ali serves as head of program Petroleum Engineering at Asia Pacific University in Malaysia. And Miss Alia took a diploma at University Technology Malaysia from 2006 until 2009. And Miss Alia took a BA in Hans Petroleum Engineering at UCSI University And Miss Elliot took a Master of Science Geology at the University Kebangsaan Malaysia. And now, Miss Elia taking a Doctor of Philosophy Geology at University Kebangsaan Malaysia. Okay, with all due deserve respect, the stage I'll give to you, Miss Elia. All right. <clears throat> Thank you. Um... Before that, um, uh, our host here is Muhammad Adam, right? Adam, is it Adam? Uh, Adam, uh, I am actually trying to share my screen, but however, um, it seems that I am unable to share my screen. It says that the host, which is you, are disabling my, my, my function to share my screen. So perhaps you could... Um, look into that otherwise uh, it's going to be a bit difficult for me to share my screen 
can you give me the permission to share my screen, Adam? Excuse me, Miss. Can you say? Ma, um, I cannot share my screen because oh. yeah, since you okay, okay, disable, okay. so I think you need to unable uh, enable it. I will let you to share your screen. Okay. So. All right. So while doing that, okay. Um. Good uh, morning, everyone. It's almost uh, afternoon here in Malaysia in Kuala Lumpur. Okay. Um. I am very delighted. I'm very happy to be here with all of you, okay? Um, and I am very uh, grateful, okay, for UIR to um, extend this invitation for me to become the guest lecturer, okay, for your uh, subject, which is stratigraphy, okay? And um, as our host and Ms. Petrianti already um, acknowledged, okay, um, APU and UIR is actually a partner university, okay, we have, um, how to say, we have um, agreed, okay, uh, and have agreed into a mutual understanding, okay, collaboration to have uh, some kind of collaboration between the two universities, okay, and early this year, which is was in February, okay, we did our first collaboration by inviting UIR to Kuala Lumpur for a fieldwork, okay, and by right, okay, uh, supposedly by end of this year, I was supposed to be in Indonesia, okay, for fieldwork as well, as well okay. However, due to the pandemic, okay, um, I unable to do so. Um, but not to worry, okay, pandemic is not a barrier for us to have knowledge transfer, okay. We still have, you know, virtual uh, platform for us to connect. And this is, you know, one of the uh, examples that will allow us to actually um, continue to communicate via um, virtual, okay? So without further ado, right? Let me just share my screen, okay? So uh, may I know whether you are seeing my slides? Can I get a confirmation whether you are seeing my slides or not? Yes, miss, I can yes. see it. Yes, yes. Okay. yes uh, ma'am. All right, okay. So throughout my lecture, okay, I have prepared, um, I think quite a lengthy slide, okay. Uh, it's a 50 slides and I hope that it's not going to take up the time allocated to me. I believe you have another class session at one o'clock. Uh, one o'clock Malaysia, okay. Um, so yeah, let's hope that uh, I can complete the session, all right. So the topic that um, was given to me uh, was sedimentation process, okay. And um, from my understanding, okay, your lecturer have actually uh, introduced you or have taught you the first few topics, okay? And I am here to fill in some of the gaps, okay? And to continue on with um, the topic, all right? So the topic for today, okay, will be the sedimentation processes, okay? Um, particularly uh, referring uh, to the mechanics, okay? As well as the fluid flow, okay? And thank you uh, to our host, okay, for uh, giving such a nice introduction, okay. Um, again, okay, allow me to um, introduce myself. My name is Ivy Sarasa, okay, and I am the current head of program of the Petroleum Engineering Program in APU, okay. And, um, and I am responsible for, to, to look at, you know, this kind of collaboration to, to, to be, to be uh, initiated, okay, and to be ongoing. All right, so um, just a recap, okay, uh, this was us, okay, um, earlier this year, okay, when UIR visited Kuala Lumpur, okay, for the geological fieldwork, okay, I have took uh, some photos, okay, to compile, to, 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 to show, okay, some of the students who were unable or were not participating, okay, did not participate in the last uh, geological uh, fieldwork, okay. So this was actually our very own first collaboration. Okay, it's called the International Geoscience Fieldwork, all right? So um, during this time, what we did is that we took, um, I think a total of 30 students, okay? Uh, 30 UIR and APU students to visit uh, several places, okay? Several places in Malaysia to observe, you know, different geological formation, right? 
it was a i think it was a fun trip okay although it was tiring okay because we were traveling over 1000 kilometers okay in that four days it was a uh, tiring however i think that uh, it was a it, it 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 was a fruitful um collaboration okay as well as visit okay and i do hope sincerely that uir have gained a uh, tremendous knowledge okay from the previous field work okay so that was us okay and this is more faces of us okay and i sincerely hope that okay in maybe in the near future once the pandemic is gone okay uh, perhaps we could um, again do this kind of collaboration okay because it is very interesting okay to see you know um culture assimilation okay uh, as well as you know um get to know each other okay different culture different country different you know multiracial right okay all right so um for today okay this will be the outline of my guest lecture okay uh i will start off with the introduction to sedimentation process okay and then uh we will move on to the highlight of the topic which is looking at the mechanics of sedimentation process okay as well as the fluid flow in sedimentation process okay and i will also be highlighting a little bit of the concepts of sedimentology okay so i would appreciate okay um that perhaps that if you have any questions okay maybe you can um jot it down okay um for you to ask uh, at the end of the session okay so not to you know to 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 disturb the session all right okay so i like this one carton okay from the usgs okay so if you see here okay this is is a little bit of introduction to sedimentary rock okay if you see here this is actually how okay in a non geology term okay how sedimentary rocks are actually formed okay so initially you will have you know a solid body mass okay a solid rock mass okay and this solid rock mass will be broken down into smaller piece of sediment okay or particles or class Okay, there are a lot of names to refer this. Okay, you can either call it sediment. Okay, you can either call it as class. Okay, or you can also call it as particles. All right, and the method of breaking down this um, body of rock mass into smaller particles comes from what we know as the weathering process. Okay, the weathering process, and we know that. Okay, we have two mechanism of weathering okay which is the physical weathering as well as the chemical weathering okay and the action of physical and chemical weathering will break okay the larger rock block into smaller particle and this particle so sorry okay in this particle is the one that will be transported to a depositional environment okay to a deposition environment so as a petroleum engineer okay it's very important for us to understand okay the deposition environment because this will be um the place in which uh, the prospect of hydrocarbon will be um will be will be found okay will be uh, discovered okay so understanding deposition environment is another topic okay and um when you study deposition environment okay you will somehow will be able to identify okay what will be the possible types of fluid okay either gas or liquid and if it is you know if it is liquid or oil okay if it's oil you will be able to also um identify what kind of oil exactly okay is it going to be like crude oil okay is it going to be um you know sour and all that okay all of the property can be also uh be attributed to the depositional environment okay now coming back to this transportation processes okay once all of this uh broken down particles okay are transported okay they will finally arrive at their final resting place i would say okay final place or what i mentioned earlier okay the depositional environment okay so in this deposition environment this is where the sediments okay will start to accumulate together okay they will be piled up okay upon another okay they will be uh piled up and they will start 
to be cemented or lithified. Okay, so the process of cementation and lithification is just the process of you know hardening the particles because whatever that we have here is the loose particles. Okay, and in order for us to come to sedimentary rocks, okay, these loose particles, okay, must be lithified. Okay, they must be cemented together. Okay, and they must be lithified. Okay, so similar like you are building a house. Okay, if you want to build a house, okay, you will start with your raw material. Okay, you have your bricks. Okay, batu bata. Okay, you will have your sand. Okay, you have all your pasir here. Okay, and you will have also your cement. Okay, and you will also have water. Okay, and by using all this raw material, okay, you will start to pile up your house. Okay, you will line up your bricks, okay? And then uh, you will uh, further cement the bricks into place so that it will not move, okay? By using cement and water and, 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 and sand, okay? So similar thing, okay? That will be the process of cementation and lithification, okay? It is simply just a process of bringing all the particles together, okay? Cement it and lithify it to become what we know as the sedimentary rocks. Okay, now the image here shows you the rock cycle. Okay, I'm pretty sure that all of you are familiar with rock cycle. Okay, what we are going to look at, okay, will be only this face. Okay, only this side of the rock cycle. Okay, since we are looking at sedimentary rock concept now. Okay, so therefore, we will only be interested to look at the concept, okay, of how rock is weathered down, how rock is eroded, okay, how they are deposited, all right, and finally, okay, they will become the sedimentary rocks, okay. Now, along the process, okay, will be the one that we would like to investigate. How can sediment travel, okay, like human, okay, if you want to go, if you want to go to, for example, from point A to point B, you have many methods of transportation. You can either walk there, okay, you can run, you can drive, you can cycle, okay, or you can swim, okay. So that is the method of transportation. Similarly, for particles, there are many ways for particles to be transported, okay. And the way they are transported is aided, okay, is, uh, is help, okay by the medium of transportation okay so this will be what we will be seeing okay what we will be covering in the uh, lecture so this is the general overview of the sedimentation process okay it's similar like whatever that i have showed earlier uh, except this is in a more geological term okay for us to reach the sedimentary rocks okay you have to undergo all these processes so that is why it is called the sedimentation process. Okay, first of all, you have your rock body. It will be weathered, okay, by either chemical or mechanical weathering. Okay, and then once you have all the loose particles, okay, it will be further eroded. Okay, it will be further eroded. And then they will be carried, okay, by the medium of transportation. Okay, and then it will be deposited, okay, and then it will be lithified, hardened, okay, to become what we call as the sedimentary rocks. Okay, and when you study sedimentary rocks, okay, you can actually break down sedimentary rocks into many types. Okay, so you have clastic sedimentary rock, okay, you have chemical sedimentary rock, okay, you have organic sedimentary rock, okay? And you also have the small subdivision of volcanic sedimentary rock, okay? The one that we are interested in, okay, will be the clastic sedimentary rock, okay? Because majority of the rock formation, okay? Majority of the rock, uh, sedimentary rock formation, okay? Are derived from the clastic sedimentary rock, okay? So clastic sedimentary rock means that it originates from the small clast, okay? From the small class or from the small particles. Volcanic is from, you know, the volcanic ash, you know, you have tuff, uh, scoria, all that, okay, and then it will be lithified together, okay, 
chemical sedimentary rock is when you have acid rain that is that will dissolute okay that will sorry that will dissolve okay into your um, calcium carbonate right and you also have organic sedimentary rock so organic sedimentary rock example here is shale okay um, and you have coal okay so these are the fragment of um, the remains of dead animals and dead ones okay so that is the general overview of the sedimentary uh, sedimentation process okay so whatever that we are seeing now okay is the work of previous you know geological processes okay whatever outcrop okay all the beautiful outcrop that we are seeing now okay is the images that we that that has been you know that has been formed okay millions of hundreds of years ago right so given to you here is one of the example okay of um, sedimentary rock okay uh, just to give you an overview, okay, of what outcrop observation means, okay. So in this case, uh, we are observing the sandstone shale lamination, okay. So this is the sandstone, okay, and this dark color is your shale, okay. So you can see that this is the type of sedimentation that occurs, okay. All right. Now, when we talk about plastic sediment transport, okay, we are interested in the transport, and we are also interested in fluid flow. Okay, you will be looking at the mechanism, okay, of how sediments are transported. Okay, so the transportation is the method of how you reach from one destination to another. Okay, in terms of sediment transport, it is the action of how you are actually uh, arriving okay, to your depositional environment from your source. Okay, so like uh, as the name implies here, transport is the transportation of weathered rock from the source rock area to a depositional site by method of transportation mechanism. Okay, so when we talk about mechanism, this is the one that I mentioned earlier. Okay, you have many ways to, to, to travel, okay, to be transported. You can walk, you can swim, okay, you can roll, okay. So for sediments, it is the same, okay. You can be, uh, the sediments can be transported by either using gravity here, okay. It can be transported by mass twisting, okay. And it can also be transported by the power of fluid, okay. So as we go with the chapter, this is where we will look at the breakdown, okay, of the methods of sediment transport. Now, majority of the sediment transport is due to gravity, okay? So you have a hill, you have a hill, okay? You have all your pokok pokok here, all your trees, okay? And then once the root of the tree, okay, loosen up the rock, okay, it will, down by itself okay so that is the force of gravity so sediments fall downhill in slums okay all the time they fall down in debris flow all the time okay and sometimes in mud flow all the time when there is water involved so all this term that you are seeing is just a method okay of sediment uh, transport due to gravity it's just um, it, it is just showing you how sediments are transported with respect to velocity, okay, with respect, with, with respect to velocity, okay. Um, I did mention earlier, okay, uh, gravity alone, okay, will only bring sediments or your rock down to the base, okay. Now, what happens when you have rain? When you have rain, okay, rain mixing with your loose sediment will also flow and when they flow they will flow as mud flow or they will flow as debris okay so this is what it means okay when it is accompanied by direct fluid flow then you will have another term which is debris and mud flow we will look at the images okay of how debris slums and mud flow looks like okay mass wasting here okay, is another form of sediment transport and they are originated from the erosion, okay. Now, mass wasting is very important 
because okay it is one of the methods that is um, available out there to transport large volumes of sediments okay large volumes of sediments however in mass westing you can only transport your sediment in short distance for example you have a hill again and this is the loose loose rock okay mass westing here will be when you have rockfall okay so when you have rockfall you have large volume of sediment that is transported from the origin from the source area to the new depositional area here however if you see okay this rock okay uh, this um, bonka batu i think if we are using the same term okay they are only transported at a very short distance okay only few meters from the uh, original sites okay if you couple it no if you couple it with the rain okay the rainwater will further help to transport this sediment over long distance. Okay, fluid transport is required to move sediments long distances. Okay, and in terms of sedimentation uh, transportation, okay, um, the fluid, okay, the, the force of fluid is actually the, the, the one that is responsible for, more, for, for most of the sediment transport. Okay, um, this is when you are looking at, you know, direction of the transportation, okay? Sometimes, okay, sometimes um, sediments can also be transported against the flow or against the gravity. So this is driven by the processes of fluid dynamics. So in this case, um, I'm not sure if I can. Okay, so this is your ocean and this is your beach. In this case, the wave of the ocean, okay, will carry the sediment and it will, you know, it will just uh, leave all the sediments at the shore. Okay, so that is one. Okay, the sediments are transported against gravity, against gravity. Okay, and if you go to the Middle East, okay, when you have done similar thing, okay, since the sand particle is very light, okay, it's very small, it can be carried by the wind and it will be transported against the gravity. Gravity is going, uh, is acting downward, okay, but due to this, you know, uh, fluid dynamics, okay, this uh, particle is somehow transported on top here, okay, but that is another story, okay, what we are, look, what we mean, what we are interested, okay, is in terms of, you know, the actual plastic sediment transport, okay? So to give you an overview, okay, we will revisit this image, okay? These are some of the common types of direct fluid flow, okay? Direct fluid flow. So this is when you have water, okay? This is when you have water. So these are some of the methods of transportation, okay? Flu not fluid, sediments can be transported either by rolling, okay, you can just roll, okay, it can be by sliding, okay, it slide along the, the bed, okay, it is, it can also be moved by saltation, so saltation is jumping, okay, jump from one uh, spot to another, okay, so if you see, these are the sediments that are much more bigger in size okay so if you study clastic if you study clastic sizes okay in geology term okay we can identify sizes okay of the sediment okay in terms of their millimeter diameter or in terms of their geology name okay so i'm not sure whether you have learned this before okay so we have what we call as boulder, okay, we have pebble, we have gravel, we have sand, we have silt, and we have clay. So all of these are referring to sizes. Clay are the smallest particles, okay, it's like iron that you cannot see with naked eyes. 
silt okay is something that you can feel okay but again you can't really see it sand okay is something that you can also touch okay but when you touch it okay between your fingers you feel like it's a it's a bit grainy okay for silt it has the powdery feel to it okay gravel is whatever that you see on the road okay the one that is between um, I'm not sure what is the size. I think it's between two to four centimeter in sizes. Okay. And then you have uh, pebbles and boulders. These are referring to much more larger um, sizes of particles. Okay. Now, those who are transporting in this manner are the one, okay, that has larger sizes. Okay. The one that has larger sizes. For particles, that is actually light smaller sizes fine particles okay they are transported either by uh, suspension or uh, dissolution okay they can either be suspended okay floating right or they are dissolved as iron okay but like i said we will revisit this uh, as we go with the chapter all right so given here is also um, the size uh, for you to refer to, okay? Um, on the bed of your, for example, we are looking at river, river environment here, okay? At the bed of your river, okay, you will see all these uh, bigger sizes, gravel or sediment size, okay? And if you go uh, slightly up, okay, you can see the sand particles on top of it, okay? And then if you were to collect the, you know, river water like that, okay, you can actually see some fine silt and clay particles, okay? So that's how fluids are transported, okay? By the medium of fluid flow, okay? That is fluid. This is mass movement, okay? This is mass movement purely depending on gravity, okay? Depending on gravity force okay so you can see that okay this is attributed to the velocity of how fast can it travel okay how fast can it travel okay you have creep here okay so creep is you know a very slow movement okay a very slow movement of flow of the the earth i would say okay that is creep it flows slowly. And then you have slump, okay? Slump is uh, one of the most observed, okay? One of the most observed mass movement, okay? Slump is when you have, you know, blocks that will just slide um, on top of each other, okay? And then you have mud flow, okay? So mud flow is also contributed, okay, to the fluid movement as well, okay? So when you have sediments and water together, okay, it, this will create mud flow. So normally you will observe mud flow in places where it has recently um, flood or rain, okay, or landslide, okay, landslide area, you will normally observe mud flow, okay, all right. And then you have rock slide, okay, so rock slide is just when, you know, rock is uh, somehow disattached from its host, okay. And this is due to the, you know, rocks are, they are, rocks are connected together. If they have fracture, if rock has fracture, they are cling to each other, okay? They are cling to each other due to the friction, okay? So if you zoom out, okay? Not zoom out. If you were to zoom in into this, okay? You have two plane. You have rock A and you have rock B. If you zoom in into this, place, okay, you will see that it actually looks something like this, okay, it's like bergerigi, okay, and all these grooves, okay, all these grooves are the one that is actually holding the rock together, okay, now once this groove loses its friction, okay, due to, you know, um, angle or swelling, pore pressure and so on, okay, it will start to slide past another. So this is where you will have rock slide, okay? Um, in places where there is um, snow, okay, you will observe debris avalanche, okay? So this is when 
you know, um, ice or snow will start to melt and just, you know, just break. Okay. And of course, we have rockfall. Okay. Rockfall is um, when you have um, rock that will just simply uh, fall, okay, due to the force of gravity. Again, rock slide and debris flow or rockfall, they are almost the same, okay. However, uh, rockfall is normally observed at a much more steeper slope, okay. Cerun-cerun yang curam, okay, right. Okay, so when we look at the sediment transport and deposition, okay, these are the medium, okay. These are the medium of how sediment can be transported. Okay, if I want to go travel to Riau, for example, I can either swim, okay, if it's that possible, okay, I can either swim, I can fly, maybe I can take a boat, okay, or what else? Yeah, okay. So similarly, sediment can be transported by water, by air, ice, or gravity. Okay, now when we took when we look at water here. When we look at water here, um, this is where you will observe um, the channel flow, the overland flow, okay? When, when we are looking at the um, land setting, okay? Land setting, okay? If you are looking at the um, ocean setting, okay? You will see waves, okay? You will see tides, okay? And you will also see ocean current. Okay? We will also revisit this at the end of the chapter. Um, water can basically transport all sort of uh, sediment. Okay, all sort of sediment. Okay, because water is very um, water has this property that allows it to carry, you know, a much more uh, better that has much more better transportation property. Okay, so it can basically transport almost everything. Okay, almost everything. For air, okay, for air, it can only transport small particle. Okay, so most likely, okay, it can only uh, transport silt and clay. Okay, silt and clay and so some small finer grains of sand okay ice definitely when you have you know glacial activity then ice will be one of the medium of transportation as well and as i mentioned before okay gravity okay so gravity is when you have rockfall and debris flow when it is uh, accompanied by fluid flow okay all right um given to you here is an example of a depositional setting or depositional environment, okay? So as a petroleum engineer, depositional environment is very important for you, okay? That is the first place for you to look for hydrocarbon, okay? That is the first place for you to look at hydrocarbon, okay? Why? Because you see, um, sediment is, sediment is carrying, okay? Um, many types of debris together with it, okay? It carries all the, you know, remains of animals, remains of um, dead plants and all, okay? And once it is accumulated at a depositional setting or deposition environment, um, it creates a conducive environment, okay? It creates a conducive environment um, to generate or to become your next um, petroleum system, okay? So that's why um, identification of deposition environment is very important as a petroleum engineer, okay? So um, just to give you some overview, okay? So we have deep marine here, deep marine setting, and then you have uh, transitional or shallow marine setting here, okay? And you have continental, okay? So you have um, continental setting that includes lacustrine or lake, okay? Uh, you have tidal flats that originates from your fluvial or river, okay? Stream here is your river. You also have alluvial fan, okay? Alluvial fan and uh, delta is almost the same, except that for alluvial fan, it is on continental, on land, purely. Delta is at the transitional, okay? Uh, the 
you know, the barrier between your land and your ocean, okay, that is delta. Uh, glacier, definitely you all know, okay, it's from, you know, uh, icy mountains that is melted down. It will melt and carry down all the sediments, right? Okay, now, as sediments are broken down and transported, okay, they are also modified, okay? They are also modified. Take you as an example, okay? Suppose that you were to travel to US, okay? You were, tra you were to travel to US, okay? And for the ladies, okay, we have, uh, before you go to, before you, before you board your plane, okay? Before you travel, okay? You put on your best uh, dress, okay? You put on your makeup, you do your hair, you style your hair, okay? And everything, but as you undergo that travel process, okay? You go towards immigration, you, you go to the plane, okay? You undergo the long hour, okay? Your body will respond to that transportation, okay? So you will feel exhausted. So when you feel exhausted, what happened? Okay, you will see modification on your body. For example, your face becomes oily, your hair becomes greasy, okay? Your clothes become dirty. Similar thing, okay, for sediment, okay? they also will undergo a sort of modification, okay? This is what we call as modification. The sediment will be modified, okay? Now, this modification, okay, is due to the distance of where it travel, okay? If it's traveling short distance, it will not be modified that much, okay? If you just travel for 20 minutes, you will not feel anything but if you try if you were to travel for 20 hours okay then you will have some modification okay and also um distance and velocity okay how fast are you um how fast are you transported okay so in terms of velocity for example you were to travel from point a to point b on a motorcycle, for example, okay, on a motorcycle, okay. Suppose that you want to travel two kilometers, okay, from your hostel to your university, for example, okay, from your hostel to campus. And then you have two different selection of motorcycle. You have Vespa and you have a superbike, for example, you have BMW S1000RR, for example, okay. Now, which one will give you better velocity? Definitely the superbike. Okay, definitely the superbike. Why? Because it can get you from your hostel to your campus in, for example, less than a minute because it's superbike. Okay, and if you compare it to your Vespa, okay, it will take you from your hostel to the campus in, for example, five minutes because it's slower. Okay, now when you are comparing between these two, okay, again. Take a take a take human as an example. Okay, um, I have set my hair, for example. Okay, and then I sit on the superbike, and then I travel at, for example, 120 kilometers per hour to the campus. When I reach the campus, my hair will become hair wire, for example. Okay, it will be modified. But if I travel at 30 kilometers per hour on the Vespa, okay, when I reach the campus, I will still be like that. Okay, I will still be as what I am. So that is also an example of how sediments are transported in terms of velocity. The higher the velocity is, okay, the more refined, okay, the more refined the sediments are, okay? So you can see here, okay, this is the example, all right? This is the source of your sediment, okay? You have your rock here, okay? You have your rock and it is somehow broken down. Okay, now as it travel down, okay, as it travel down, okay, it will go all this distance, okay, and the more it travel, okay, the more it will be refined, okay, the more it will be refined, okay, so from having an angular jagged rag edges of sediment, okay, as you travel downwards, okay, all of these sharp edges will be gone, okay, because it will be, you know, terhakis, and all that until you reach your final deposition environment. Okay, so this is where you will observe that you have a fine grain. Okay, from coarse to medium 
to fine grain. So these are the modification. Okay, these are the modification. In terms of sorting, okay, in terms of sorting, this will be when you were to look at the you know configuration of the sediments here. Okay, what kind of sediment that you found there and how are they um, sorted? Okay, that is the sorting. Okay, so to give you a, a, a much more uh, clearer view, okay, this is the effect of transportation on rounding or the shape of your particles and the sorting of the sediments. Okay, this is the origin of the source and this is the deposition environment, for example. The closer you are to the source, okay, okay the more angular your particle is. And if you were to look at the sorting of the particle here, you can see that it is actually a mixture of big particle with small particle. So it is very, very poorly sorted, okay? And as you go further from the source, you can see that your particle size is much more refined, okay? It is much more rounded, it is much more refined. And when you reach the final deposition environment here, you can see also that it is very well sorted, okay? Because whatever that reach here is all of the things that has been uh, sorted properly, for example. So in this case, I like to use the example of you running a marathon, for example. You are running 21 kilometers of marathon, okay? From the start line, okay, all of you are here, those who can run or those who cannot run, okay, all of you are here. And then once you release the line, okay, and then at Let's not take one kilometer because I cannot even run for 10 meters. Okay, let's take, uh, okay, let's take 10 meters. Okay, after 10 meters, here you will see that you can still have, you know, the fast runner and the, the slow runner. Okay, but as you go further in here, you can only see all the champions, all the fast runner. So you can see that they are all well sorted in here it's still mixed okay those who can run and those who cannot run they are all mixed together okay so this is one of the examples of sorting right okay now in terms of types of flow okay we are talking about fluid flow here okay we are talking about types of fluid flow here right we have basically three types of flow okay so if you study fluid mechanics you will also be um uh, you will also be introduced to this. Okay, you have laminar flow, you have turbulent, and you also have the transitional flow. Okay, so laminar flow is when flow fluid are flowing in a uniform uh, sheet-like material. Okay, parallel and in sheet. Okay, turbulent flow is when it is flowing in a scattered mode. Okay, in a scattered mode. And transitional, okay, is when you have a mixture of laminar and turbulent. Okay, when you have the mixture of laminar and turbulent. All right. Now, we can also attribute, okay, um, whatever types of outcrop. Okay, for example, you have found a beautiful outcrop. Okay. And when you see the outcrop, okay, you can also predict the type of uh, flow that it has undergone actually from how it was deposited, okay? If you are seeing a very nice layer, like the one in Grand Canyon, USA, so you know that, okay, they originates from a laminar flow because, you know, sediments are deposited in a very, you know, nice sedimentation layer, okay? In a turbulent flow, okay, this is where you will somehow found, okay, a disturbance in your phases, okay, a disturbance in your phases. Okay, so in this case, you can tell that there is a disturbance, okay, there might be a turbulent flow in between, okay, of the sedimentation, okay. So in turbulent flow, okay, it is very different with laminar, okay? It is characterized by complex motion. So you can see that you can't actually identify how or where is the path of the particles, okay? 
because all of the sediments, okay, all of the molecules, they are moving in all of the direction. They move up, they move down, left, right, okay, they reverse back, okay. So that is turbulent flow. So inside a turbulent flow, there's a lot of mixing, okay. There's a lot of mixing because your particle will keep on colliding with each other as they travel in their own scattered pattern. Okay, right. And like I said, transitional is have is a is a is a mixture between laminar as well as the turbulent flow. Okay, so this is how it looks like. Okay, in a laminar flow, you can see that particles are flowing in a very uh, smooth transition. Okay, and in a turbulent flow, okay, there is no specific pathway. Okay, uh, particles are actually moving in a much more uh, scattered. Okay, so this is another example. Okay, starting from laminar up to turbulent. Now, what could be the reason why the flow regime? Okay, this is what we call as flow regime. Okay, why the flow regime changes from having a slow and steady laminar flow to become a turbulent flow. Okay, so they are attributed to many, many factors. Okay, and to understand that, okay, this is where you have to understand Reynolds number, okay. So in fluid mechanics, okay, we learn Reynolds number, okay. Reynolds number is a parameter, it's a dimensionless parameter that is used for you to classify whether you have laminar flow or whether you have turbulent flow, okay. So in geology, we also adapt that kind of concept to understand what is the flow regime of our sediment transport. So in this case, okay, in this case, sediments are changing, not sediments, sorry, the flow, okay, of the, of the transportation changes from laminar to become turbulent due to the increase in velocity, okay, due to increase in viscosity, okay, Due to the restriction, for example, our, um, take traffic jam. I think you call it as machet, okay? Traffic jam, okay? Consider you are driving in a one, two, three, four, four lanes of highway to reach the same destination, okay? If all of you are driving smoothly at 100 kilometers per hour, the flow of traffic will be very, very smooth. Now, let's say there's an accident here. Okay, there's an accident and only two lanes are moving. So what happened is that these two lanes will converge to become this one lane. So you are restricted. The movement is restricted. So in this case, it will become this, the cross-sectional area of the flow path, okay, is also making a difference, okay, the diameter or the cross-sectional area, okay. So these are some of the parameter that will also contribute to the change in terms of, um, you know, changes uh, from having a laminar flow, you see, laminar flow, and then it starts to uh, waver a bit, okay, and then in this manner, you can see uh, changes of transient flow, okay. This is a smooth transient and then it becomes more disturbed. This is very disturbed, and then you can see that it is a turbulent. All right. Now, I did mention, okay, that the flow is depending upon the velocity of your fluid, <clears throat> upon the viscosity and the bed roughness, okay? So bed roughness here will be the restriction. For example, this is your river, your riverbed, okay? And this is the surface of water, okay? This is the surface of water. So consider you have a smooth without any restriction on the riverbed. So your fluid can flow or your sediment can be transported easily. Now, let's say you have obstruction. For example, you have a big boulder down here. Okay, so what happened is that since the bed roughness is no longer smooth, okay, this will create disturbance, okay, this will create disturbance in your fluid movement, that is bed roughness, okay, and to repeat, 
uh, laminar flow is characterized, okay, as having a streamline. Streamline is, you know, one parallel line and uniform current, okay? The velocity is the same, all right? Um, laminar flow is characterized as having a very low fluid velocity, okay? High viscosity and smooth bed. Low fluid velocity means that the flow is flowing slowly. High viscosity means that the fluid is very, very thick. Okay, so this can be seen from the flow of lava. Okay, at least for the high viscosity lava. Okay, so when you have a very high viscosity lava, it flows very slowly. You know, it takes time for it to destroy everything in this path. Okay, so in that case, you can say that the flow of lava is laminar because it has very low velocity, okay, maybe uh, three meter per second, or three meter per second is fast, okay, maybe, maybe one meter per second, okay, and high viscosity is very viscous. Now consider that, okay, with the flow of blood water, okay, since it's generally just water, okay, it has high velocity, okay? Water can flow easily, okay? And um, water has very, very uh, low viscosity, okay? Very, very low viscosity. So in that case, okay, you will observe that you are actually having a turbulent flow, okay? So when you have, you know, flood, you can see that everything is destroyed and water are just, you know, start to gush from all over the place, okay? So it is characterized as having a discontinuous, distorted, and uh, flow motion is perpendicular to the primary flow direction, okay? So example here is eddies, okay? So eddies, uh, if you see from the river, okay, sometimes in one part of the river, you can see that it is actually, you know, it has this uh, whirlpool, I don't know what it is translated, okay? Whirlpool or eddy, okay? So this is, um, what is it? This is uh, an example, okay? So if you were to look at the cross-section, okay? The cross-section, it kind of looks like this, okay? It kind of looks like this. Similar like uh, if you fill your bathtub or your sink with water, okay? And then you pull out the stopper, you can see that water will start to... Um, flow in a whirlpool manner, okay? So that's similar, right? Oh yeah, okay, so this is the, the one that I meant. These are some of the example of the flow regimes in a stream, okay? So if you see here, in this particular area, flow are in laminar. Why? Because there is no disturbance, okay? There is no disturbance, but in here, you have all this disturbance. Okay, you have all these disturbance. So the bed is not rough anymore. Okay. And um, again, what I wanted to highlight here, okay, is the flow between the laminar and the turbulent flow. This is what I meant by having eddies or whirlpool. This whirlpool is actually a smaller version of eddy. So eddy is actually a rotational movement of fluid. Okay, instead of going, instead of flowing in a straight path, okay, it is actually rotated. That is eddy. Okay. So again, this is another example, okay, of how um, fluid can change from laminar to turbulence because of this obstruction or uh, disturbance. All right, so similar thing, okay, when you have a disturbance, okay, at the area here, this is where you will observe that this is the turbulence. So this is basically the place where you will observe the eddies, okay? Now, coming to sediment transportation, okay? Coming to uh, sediment transportation, the critical velocity, okay? Critical velocity is, um, is basically the um, average velocity of your sediment, okay? They are different, okay, for sediment entrainment and deposition, especially for finer particles, okay? Now, 
the fluid density and the fluid viscosity plays a very important role to determine what type of particle size can be transported. Okay, so what, do, what does it mean by fluid density and fluid viscosity? Okay, now suppose that, um, what is the example? What is the example? Uh, suppose that high fluid density and viscosity okay um okay you have a you have a floor not really okay basically uh when we when we when we look at the 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 fluid okay the the fluid all right the denser and the more viscous the fluid is okay the more better it is at transporting larger particle. Yeah. Okay. The more better it is at transporting larger particles. Okay. This is because due to the, you know, due to the cohesion that exists between um, the particle, okay, of the fluid, the molecules, not particles, the, the molecules in the fluid, okay, it is able to carry or to overcome the forces okay that is um, imposed by the particle that you are trying to transport okay so the denser your particle okay sorry the denser your fluid is okay and the more denser it is sorry the more denser and the more viscous your fluid okay the more better it is at carrying uh, larger particles okay the more better it is at carrying larger particles okay the amount of sediment transport here okay they are not just only related to the flow velocity okay they are also related to the grain density as well as the grain shape okay so that is basically the um basis okay in terms of sediment transportation okay now let's quickly look at the concept of Reynolds number. Okay, now let's quickly look at the concept of Reynolds number. I did mention before that Reynolds number is actually uh, a dimensionless parameter that is used to uh, classify, okay, whether you have turbulent flow, whether you have laminar flow, or whether you are at the transitional region. Okay. And to calculate your Reynolds number, okay, to calculate Reynolds number, this is the equation or these are the parameter that will contribute to your Reynolds number, okay? It depends upon your velocity, okay? It depends upon the distance of where you want to travel, okay? It depends upon the density, okay? As well as the viscosity of the fluid, okay? These are the factors that will contribute, okay, whether uh, you have a laminar flow or a turbulent flow, okay? Right. So we have this um, standard of value, okay? Whenever your Reynolds number is lesser than 500, okay, since it is dimensionless, it has no unit. Whenever your Reynolds number is less than 500, we consider that it is a laminar flow. Okay? When the Reynolds number is greater than 2000, then it is turbulent. Okay? Now, this laminar flow, they are very, very common in high viscosity or low velocity fluid. Okay? Where fluid is flowing very smoothly and slowly. Okay, this is where you will observe laminar flow. Think of lava flow. Okay, think of lava flow. All right, water can be laminar. Water can also be laminar when their velocity is very low, when water is you know, flowing very slowly. Okay, suppose that you were to, to pour water, okay, to slide over a plane slowly, then that is laminar. But if you just dump it, okay, if you just dump it like that, okay, then the velocity will be, you know, scattered. Then that will uh, contribute to the turbulent flow. Okay, all right. When we talk about wind, 
Okay, when we talk about wind flow, wind flow are essentially turbulent. Okay, because wind are unpredictable. Okay, sometimes you have strong wind and sometimes you have you know um, very mild slow wind. Okay, wind are essentially turbulent. Okay, why is it considered as turbulent? It is because the property of the wind itself, the physical property of the wind, the viscosity of the wind is low. So therefore, okay, it is considered as essentially turbulent. Okay. However, there are some modification that you can do, okay, to actually modify the turbulent flow of the wind. Okay. So this uh, wind flow, turbulent wind flow is when you have dry air. And to achieve laminar flow in wind flow, what you can do is that you can saturate. Okay, you can saturate the air. Okay, you add a little bit of mist to it. Okay, so that it will be uh, much more denser. Then it can flow in a laminar flow. Now, why do geologists or in particular sedimentologists care about the Reynolds number? Okay, because when you have turbulent flow, okay, you know that this turbulent flow will carry much more greater erosive force as compared to laminar flow. So you can predict that if you consistently have turbulent flow, okay, you can observe that the outcrop maybe after five years will be eroded completely. Okay, suppose that you are studying slope, you are studying cherun, okay, you are studying slope. And you know that the slope has tendency of you know carrying debris, carrying water and particles. Okay. And when you study, okay, you observe that the flow here is turbulent. Okay, because you know, uh, due to the high amount or high velocity of uh, what is that, water and so on. Okay, you can predict that, okay. Maybe when I come back here in two years, for example, to observe this outcrop, okay, maybe it will be washed out. Maybe it will be eroded away. Okay. Another example is um, what is the example? Uh, another example is, for example, if you have a fountain, okay, if you have a fountain, how do I draw a fountain? Looks like salt dome now. If you have a fountain, fountain is you know the, the the decoration that you put in your pond, something like that. Okay, so you have water flowing slowly here. You can observe that. Okay, since it is flowing in a laminar flow, it will not destroy. It will not destroy your pasu. It will not destroy your vas. Okay, so that is the closest thing that I can think of. Okay, of laminar flow and Turbulent flow. Okay. Another thing. Okay. So we are actually adapting a lot of uh, mechanical concept. Okay. When we are trying to understand uh, geology, uh, especially transportation better. Okay. We have what it call as the Froude number. Okay. In addition to the effect of fluid viscosity and the initial forces. Gravity is also influencing the way fluid is transferred. Okay, so the Froude number FR here, okay, the Froude number is considered the ratio between the average velocity of the flow to the average velocity of the wave. So we are looking at the wave here. Okay, so we will look at some of the illustration later. Okay, before that, okay. Uh, if you were to study uh, sedimentation, okay, for your final year project or something like that, okay, and you would like to study it in terms of engineering geology, okay, so these are some of the things that you have to understand, okay. This is how we characterize the fraud, uh, fraud number, okay. If the fraud number is uh, less than one, it means that you have a subcritical flow. And if it is greater than one, it means that you have a supercritical flow. This is how we interpret the fraud number. Okay, like I said, repeating when a uh, fraud number is less than one, the flow is considered quiet or subcritical. Okay, the wave can move upstream against the flow. But if the value is greater than one, this is where you will have supercritical or fast flow. Okay.
All right. Now, this is the example. Okay. Suppose that you have a river. Okay. And you have a different elevation here. Okay. This is much more higher. This is much more lower places. Okay. In, um, in a much more deeper, okay, in a much more deeper elevation, okay, uh, with respect to gravity, right? It will, with, with respect to gravity. If your Froude number is less than one, this is where you will have a subcritical flow, okay? And when you have a Froude number of less than one, this is where you will have a supercritical quiet flow, okay? All right, now, one of the applications of fraud number, okay, is to determine your flow regime as well. So in this case, we classify, uh, okay, for Reynolds number just now, okay, for Reynolds number, we classify our flow regime into three. So we have laminar, transitional, and turbulent. Am I right? In the fraud number, okay, in the fraud number, we can also classify flow regime okay in fraud number we can classify flow regime to have high and lower flow regime so it depends on what kind of parameter that you want to use to characterize your flow regime if it's Reynolds number then you have to look at the property of Reynolds number the density the viscosity the length the velocity the velocity okay and if you want to characterize your Flow regime in terms of fraud number, okay? This is also where you have to look at the parameter for fraud number, okay? Your velocity, okay? What other parameter is that? Your um, average velocity, okay? The depth of the water, the elevation, as I mentioned earlier, okay? And the acceleration due to gravity, okay? So you have two ways to characterize it, okay? Two mechanisms to characterize flow regime, either by using Reynolds number or by using fraud number. Okay, so the application depends on what exactly do you want to study, all right? Now, in terms of uh, flow regime, okay, in terms of flow regime, the lower flow regime here comprises of a subcritical flow in which you will observe ripple, you will, res uh, you will observe dance, okay, of any types of plane parallel uh, stratifications. Okay. In the upper flow regime, this is where you will observe the supercritical flow. You have antidance, okay, and you have plane parallel stratifications that are stable. Now, why do we need to understand fraud number? Okay, because fraud number is under is important for you to understand the ripple and the type of bad form that you will find. Okay, so for uh, Reynolds number. You want to understand the amount of you know erosion, but fraud number. You want to understand what kind of base or what kind of ripple that you will observe. Now let me show you the example of the difference between the lower flow regime to the upper flow regime. Okay. Now in the lower flow regime, you can see that these are the kind of <coughs> excuse me. These are the kind of bad forms that you will observe. Okay, you will have ripples, okay, you will have dance, right? And if you look at the sand motion, okay, you can see that it is intermittent. Intermittent means that sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not, okay? Uh, like, you know, you have a flow and then you stop, and then you flow again and then you stop. That is intermittent, okay? Sediment transport, okay, you can only transport low concentration sediment, means that whatever that is uh, transported is transported in a uh, small volume okay and the structure that you can observe from this kind of uh, transportation are small trough okay and also you know all these kind of uh, dunes that has a very uh, uniform parallel layer okay in the upper flow regime okay this is where you will observe a much more uh, greater velocity Okay, so you can see that you have a plane bed, okay, and you have anti dance. So anti dance is when you have a movement, you know, that is reversed. Okay, that is reversed. In terms of the same motion, okay, in terms of the sand motion, this is when you have continuous. Okay, you have continuous flow. Okay, the 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 fluid keeps on uh, consistently moving in your standing water, or the wind keeps on transporting your sand on your dance that is the continuous movement 
Okay, and since it is continuous, okay, it is carrying a much more higher volume. And when you look at the types of stratification, you can observe that it has a tabular set planar stratification. Okay, all right. But this are, uh, I think, another topic of uh, sedimentation. Okay, this is uh, more towards your uh, sediment sedimentary structure. Okay. Um, <clears throat> another thing that is worth to note here, okay, is the usage of this diagram. Okay, so the usage of this diagram allow us to estimate the velocity of the fluid that is the velocity of the sediment that is transported. Okay, and we can we can also estimate the changes in terms the in terms of the velocity. Okay, and we can also predict. Okay, so if I have this kind of uh, movement, okay, in the deposition environment, I will observe, for example, ripple. Okay, I will observe sand dance. Okay, so this is you know this is a um, sort of um, a chart or a graph that you can see to predict or to estimate the velocity changes. Okay, right? Uh, okay, this is the same thing, okay? Uh, this is uh, showing you the example of the upper and the lower flow regime. So when you have a frown number of greater than one, this is when you have plain bed and the dance. And when you have a frown number of less than one, okay, this is when you have uh, this kind of stratification, right? Okay. So um, I do have a few more slides, don't worry. I will stop at uh, one o'clock, okay? Uh, in terms of fluid flow dynamics, okay? Now let's have a look at the media, okay? Let's have a look at how water is transporting uh, sediment. Let's have a look at how gravity, ice, wind is transporting um, sediments, <clears throat> okay? Now, in water, the coarse particle such as sand, gravel, Okay, will be transported if the energy of the stream will overcome the weight of the particle. Okay, the weight of the particle. So in the case of the smaller finer particles, okay, the cohesive force is the one that has to be overcome in order for it to be transported. Okay, the forces, okay, in, when you look at the, so you have sediment, okay, this is force, this is the flow direction. When you look at this particle itself, it has three forces acting on itself, okay? So it has the weight force, it has the drag force, and it also has the lifting forces, okay? All right? Now, in terms of water, okay, in terms of water, when your media, okay, when your media is water, sediment can be transported either in solution, traction, suspension or saltation, okay? So solution here, solution here is when you have, you know, very small iron size, okay, clay particle that is dissolved or chemically transported, okay? So remember the first few figures that I showed before, okay, these are some of the example. Traction is when you roll over the bed of the surface. Suspension, okay, is permanently, it will not settle down, but it will just continuously suspended and transported, okay? And saltation is jumping over the bed surface, okay? In terms of ice, okay, in terms of ice, the viscosity of ice is high, that is not directly actually recognized as fluid. It's actually considered as, you know, in between. We cannot classify whether it's ice or solid, okay, because it cannot flow like a fluid, but it cannot retain its solid shape. So since the complicit, uh, complication, okay, in defining ice, okay, uh, the, the important thing that we have to understand here is that ice can, can transport large amount of sediment, okay, because, you know, um, when you have huge avalanche of ice, of snow, okay, when it wash out, okay, it can wash out a large amount of sediment along its pathway, okay? The ice flow sometimes can be very slow and laminar, <clears throat> okay? But sometimes it can also be a turbulent flow, especially when you are looking at the steep, uh, steep, uh, steep uh, slope, okay? <clears throat> in terms of air, okay, in terms of air, 
in terms of air here, okay, air is a fluid of very low density and very low viscosity. Okay, and usually air is capable of transporting in suspension only. It can transport only smaller, finer particles. Okay, all right. And when you are transporting sediment by using air, okay, uh, it is sediments are transported actually in a very high speed, in a very turbulent manner. Okay, gravitational flow. Okay, so this is where sediments are transported by the force of gravity only. So you have grain flow here, you have mud or debris flow. Okay, so the action of the gravity itself can transport the sediment in the underwater environment. Okay, so in, in, in this case, okay, it is common that, you know, majority of the sediment is transported in terms of suspension. Okay, through gravity, grain flow can occur. Okay, so grain flow normally we observe when you have a very small light particle, okay, and you can observe it in dunce, okay, and mud flow and debris flow is when you have larger particles accompanied by fluid movement, okay. <clears throat> so this is the example of grain flow. So what does it mean by grain flow? Suppose you have you have a sand dun, okay, what happened if you were to walk here? With every step that you take, you will create all this disturbance. So this disturbance is what we call as the grain flow. Grain will just flow like that. Okay. And this is an example of the debris or the mud flow. You can see that different sizes of particles are actually transported. Okay. Together with, I don't know what is this foreign object. Okay. So this is an example of debris or mud flow which is accompanied by other media such as fluid. Okay, now one of the most important <clears throat> phenomena here, okay, is the turbidity current. Okay, so turbidity current happens on the um, aqueous condition, okay, in the, uh, in the subsurface environment. Okay, so it occurs at the bottom of the sea or bottom of the lake. Okay, so what happened here? Sediments will start to flow downward from your continental shelf. Okay, and due to this movement, okay, sediment, when they reach the deposition environment, okay, they will be sedimented upwards like this. Okay, they will be sedimented like this. Okay, so turbidity current is also one of the most uh, interesting uh, mechanism. Okay, so when you look at the uh, different phases, you can see that when you observe an outcrop, okay, sometimes you see at the lower part, okay, it has very fine grain, and then suddenly you observe gravel, and then at the top one, you can see that there is a larger, um, larger blocks, sorry, larger grain of particle. So in this case, <clears throat> these are one of the effects of the turbidity current. Okay, this is the effect of turbidity current. Now, if you were to study more into this turbidity current, okay, whoops, before that, these are some of the example of turbidity environment. Okay, so you can see that towards here, okay, all of these are fine grain. But if you see up here, okay, it is actually consisting of a much more larger blocks. Okay, so this is an example of turbidity environment setting. If you are interested in uh, turbidity uh, study, okay, this is where you will um, look at, okay, the BOMA sequence. So BOMA sequence is just uh, referring to the um, classic example of sedimentary structure, okay? So you have, you know, starting from down, you have sandstone, and then you have horizontal lamination of sandstone, okay? And then you have ripple cross lamination, horizontal, and so on, okay? So BOMA sequence is another topic, subtopic of stratigraphy, if I'm not mistaken. That refers to how sediments are, you know, structured, the phases of it. <clears throat> All right. And the last part, okay, the last part of uh, today's lecture will be looking at the sedimentology concept. A little bit brief introduction of sedimentary, uh, sedimentology concept, sorry. So when we say sedimentology, give me one minute. So when you talk about sedimentology, 
this is actually the study of natural sediments. Okay, whether it is lithified or non lithified And it is also actually the process of how sediments are formed. Okay, now, based on the unidirectional flow, okay, this will lead to what we observe. If we go to, you know, if we look at the sediment structure, you see current ripples, you, you see duns, okay, you see anti duns as well. Okay. All right. Now let's have a look at one of the example of the sedimentary structure, which is current ripple. So current ripple, okay, is attributed by a small size of sand grain, and they occur, okay, as a result of boundary layer separation. Okay. So when you look at current ripple, okay, you can see that it has two sides: the side in which it uh, sediment are eroded and the site in which sediment are deposited. So the site of erosion here is called the stoss site, and the site in which sediment are deposited is called the lee site. Okay, and then you have the angle of repose. So the angle of repose is this angle. Okay, you have the angle of repose of 30 degree. Now current repose, normally you will observe under you know, moderate flow velocity with a grain size of as I mentioned before, less than 0 0.7 millimeter. And this is the other uh, physical appearance of current ripples. So if you do not know what's current ripples, this is how it looks like. Okay, so you can observe it on the beach, actually. Okay, you can observe it on the beach or in the river. Okay, so you can see that if you look at this individual um, structure, you can observe that it has a weathered, eroded um, side of it, and it has the transported, okay, or deposited, not, not transported, the deposited side of it. So this is the store side, and this is the lee side, okay, and this is the flow of the current, okay. And then you have duns, okay, with duns are very, very familiar, okay, it's very, very famous. Um, duns are actually uh, attributed by having uh, particles that is larger than current ripples, okay. So it, it is normally formed in grain sizes of more than 0 0.2 millimeter, okay? So in dance, okay, you can observe either one of this um, structure, okay, with respect to flow direction. You can either have a straight structure, sinuous structure, or isolated structure, all this depending on the flow direction, okay? If the flow direction is consistent, then you will observe a straight structure. Okay, so for example, you have sand and you have flow of wind. If the wind consistently flowing from one direction, then you will have a straight structure. If, for example, you have sand, you have wind, okay, at first it will be like this, and then another wind comes from this direction, then it will be distorted, and then comes another wind from this direction, and then again it will be distorted. So this is where you will have the isolated or linguid uh, structure. Okay, all right. So low flow velocity, okay, will create a straight crested bed form. Which one? This one. Okay. And for higher flow velocity, this is where you will observe a much more isolated or sinuous flow. Not flow, sinuous structure. Okay. So these are some of the example. Okay. Uh, this is a straight. Okay. This is a straight. And this is the... Sorry, this is the linguid. Okay, and this is the example of a sinus. Okay, so all of these are attributed due to the different energy level. Okay, you have planned beds and anti dunes. Okay, so all of these are attributed to the energy level of the transportation media, and it is also attributed to the grain size that you are transporting. Okay, depending on the grain size. If you have smaller grain size, then you have current ripples. If you have larger grain size, then you will have plain beds, anti duns and so on. Okay, in coarse sand, okay, which is larger than 0 0.7 mm, lower stage plain beds here will develop instead of the current ripple. Okay, instead of having current ripple that is, you know, small like that, if you have larger particles, then you will develop plain beds. Okay, all right. And again, when you look at the fraud number, okay, you can also see 
what kind of you can predict what kind of uh, erosion that it that will be uh, formed due to that particular uh, flow conditions. Okay, all right. Uh, this is an example of a sand waves. Okay, sand waves are wind generated and also attributed to the fluid movement. Okay, of water, the height of the sand here. Okay, the height of the, 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 the waves here is dependent on the strength of the wind. Okay, so the higher your wind strength, okay, then the higher will be the uh, amplitude here of your um, ripples. Okay, so wave ripples and uh, current ripples are different. Okay, they are different due to their uh, symmetry. Okay, and they are also uh, different in terms of the types of energy that we are looking at here. Okay, so for uh, wave or sand ripples, okay, it is normally attributed to a much more higher velocity, much more higher energy of uh, fluid transportation. Okay, all right. And then you have ocean tides, okay? Ocean tides is, you know, when you observe, sometimes the beach has water, sometimes the beach water is like so far away. So that is attributed by the ocean tides. And from physics, we know that ocean tides are, are clock, are tied closely, okay? To the force, to the gravitational force of the moon, okay? These are some of the several types of ocean tides that is available, okay? So you have semi-diurnal, nip spring, annual, okay? Uh, these are the people who the people who study this are the one who study you know oceanographic they are the one who will be observing all these types of ocean tides okay but the one that we observe as a geologist okay are this one low tide is when you have this condition okay and high tide is when you see changes in the sea level okay low tide and high tide and the actual representation can be seen as this one this is when you have low tide this is when you have high tide so you can see in low tide people can actually walk towards the beach when it's high tide okay people actually have to kayak towards this okay all right and um another thing that is worth to know okay if you go diving okay um you can see that the the bottom here you can see that the bottom here okay has all this uh, movement so all these are actually ocean ripple marks so you have sand ripple marks, okay, current ripple marks. These are ocean ripple marks, completely submerged underwater. Okay, current or current ripple marks is the one that you observe on the continental level. Ocean ripple marks is the one that you observe on the um, on the ocean bed at shallow depth. Okay, so normally the types of sediment that is transported here are fine silt to fine sand. Okay, and they are formed due to the um, slow to fast flow velocity slow to fast flow velocity okay with that i end my lesson okay if there is anything that you would like to ask me i cannot erase this okay i can erase mine this one was someone else's okay you can reach me this is my um email address okay if you would like to reach me offline, okay, in any ways, okay, you may add me, sorry, you may uh, reach to reach through my email, okay? And uh, I think that is all, okay? Uh, I think I took up a lot of your time with 50 slides. I'm so sorry about that. And yeah, with that, I pass it back to our host, Muhammad Adam. Thank you so much. All right, Miss Ali, thank you for your great presentation. And now I can remember my old lesson and some new ones. This is very interesting even I really want to discuss with you. And a little bit information for you, Miss Ali. Maybe some material you convey is actually material they will learn in the next semester. Okay, but, all right, very good. But now we will enter the question and answer session. And I will open the first three question, please, for the answer and for the participant to give the question open your mic and the camera so and give you a question uh, baik untuk seluruh partisipan yang ingin bertanya silahkan mengaktifkan mic dan uh, video anda sebelum bertanya dan silahkan bertanya kepada Miss Ali dalam bahasa Inggris atau bahasa Indonesia terima kasih
Dan untuk penanya pertama for the first question Apakah ada yang ingin bertanya? Uh, saya, saya boleh. Oke, okay, baik. Dari Febri Sebastian. Oke, okay, Febri Sebastian. Febri Hi Sebastian. Febri Sebastian. Hello. Hi. Uh, introduce. I my name is Febri Sebastian. I'm from in Petroleum Engineer University Islamis Riau. Uh, I want to ask the, about the formation of non plastic sediments non plastic sediments uh, rocks are sedimentary rocks that are formed as the result of the evaporation of a solution or a deposition of material in the place uh, i asked you how is the process evaporation of solution in non plastic sediment thank you how okay let me repeat <clears throat> what is the process of sedimentation in yeah, non-classic? Result of evaporation. Result of evaporation? Yes. Result of evaporation. So you are, ask, mm. you are referring to um, specifically to plastic sedimentary rock or sediment, uh, sorry, uh, chemical sedimentary rock or, or, or what? non plastic non plastic sediments okay so i think i did mention before uh, non plastic sediment means that sediment sorry a uh, rock that is formed not by mm. the accumulation of the class okay so oh, when we yeah. when we talk about sedimentary rock sedimentary rock can be found or can be formed by mm. uh, multiple methods one is plastic plastic means that you have mm -hmm. rock and you have sediment that is originated from the rock. Okay, they are broken down together, transported. Okay, and then they are sedimented. Okay, so example is that is a uh, batu pasir. Okay, your sandstone. Mm. Okay, another type. Okay, which is non-plastic. Okay, is chemical sedimentary rock. So chemical mm, sedimentary, sedimentary rock. Yeah, chem chemical sedimentary rock is when you have a host. Okay, uh, for example, you have uh, limestone. Okay, and then with the action of uh, rainwater, okay, it will dis dissolve some minerals inside of the uh, rock. Okay, and then when it is deposited again, okay, the chemical structure, not chemical, the chemical composition will somehow alter. So that will give you the um, chemical sedimentary rock. And then we also have, what is that? Uh, we have um, organic sedimentary rock. So organic sedimentary rock is basically your coal, okay, your coal or your shell. So they are made of, you know, uh, dead fragments or, or remains of plants, okay. So mm -hmm. this will, uh, you normally observe this in swamps. In uh, swamps is what, paya bakau, something like that, okay. So this is where you observe, you know, all the the the, the dead plants will start to. To, to leave remains and accumulated over time, it will become rock. Okay, um, coal is um, batu bara, I think. Okay, all right. I hope I answer your question. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you for the question. Tadi dalam bahasa Indonesia kita disampaikan oleh Miss bahwa ada beberapa tipe dari sedimen itu seperti tadi ada yang dijelaskan oleh Miss itu salah satunya adalah plastik dan non plastik ya Miss beberapa tipe dari sedimen. Oke okay, uh, for the next question we have two again. Uh, saya uh, mau bertanya. Okay. Bang, saya for... bang. Prayoga Prayoga. Prayoga. Oke okay, open your mic and your video. Oke. Okay. Uh, firstly, thank you for Miss Ali to give me a chance to ask a little question. No problem. Uh, my name is Prayoga. I'm from. I'm a petroleum engineer from Islamic University of Rio. I want to ask about uh, just a little question. I want to ask about uh, what the outline relation about sedimentation and petroleum exploration, and why it is so important for petroleum engineering like us. Okay. All right. Um. I do get this kind of questions, okay, especially for students who doesn't like geology. They will just say, why do we have to study all this? It's just rocks. 
Okay, so um, sedimentation is important because um, once you understand, okay, how sediments are sedimented, you will be able to predict, okay, in which layer or in which depth will be the layer, sedimentation layer, where has, you know, where it has a uh, much more promising, um, how to say, promising layer of hydrocarbon, okay, because not all layers will have a prospect to become, uh, what is that, um, to become the hydrocarbon pool, not all, okay, they have to um, follow or they have to fulfill some requirement for them to become the, uh, the next prospect of hydrocarbon pool. So by studying sedimentology, okay, you will know, you will understand, okay, uh, whether this particular layer have fulfilled what we call as the elements of petroleum system, okay, it has its cap rock, it has a source rock, okay, it has a trap, okay, it has a perfect maturation, okay, and so from there, you will be able to predict in which depth there will be a prospect of hydrocarbon and where exactly is it located. So that is why it is important for you to study um, sedimentology. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much for Ms. Ali. I think it's enough for me. Uh, thank, thank you so much. Okay, thank you for your question and thanks for Ms. Ali. Okay, the last question is from... Bang. Bang. Okay, so you can open your camera and your mic, and this, the time is for you. Hi, Miss. Good afternoon. Hi. Let me introduce myself. My name is Bunga Arafa. Oh, um, I thought Bunga Citra Lestari. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna ask you about if you want to research the stratigraphy. Uh, what we should do first? I mean, like, what the step in the stratigraphic analysis? What is the step? What exactly do you want to find? What exactly do you want to study? If you want to the research about the stratigraphy. Okay. So, um, as a geologist, basically, the first thing that we have to do is we need to look at the outcrop, okay? So, the first thing that you have to do is to observe the outcrop, okay? And before you can actually find the outcrop, definitely, you will need to do some death study, okay? Some geology study, okay? So, you need to understand where could be the, posi uh, the possible place for you to find this kind of formation or outcrop. Once you have identified that location, then you go to that location, you go out, uh, observation, okay? You observe what kind of outcrop that you are seeing, okay? And to confirm, okay, to confirm, then you need to do some mapping work or you need to do some uh, sampling work, okay? You collect sample, okay? You create your sediment log, all that. All that is related to the study of stratigraphy, actually. Okay, yes. Thank you for the answer. Okay. All right. All of you are in uh, in your hometown, yeah, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe this is the last question for you, Miss. Okay. Sure. From Ray Anthony Situmora. Okay. 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 Ray Anthony, you can yeah, bang. open your video. Time okay, is bang. yours. Hello, Miss. Hi. How are you? Apa kabar? I'm fine, Miss. Let me introduce myself, Miss. My name is Ray Anthony Stumorang from Islamic University of Riau, petroleum engineer. I want to ask you, not ask, but uh, I want you to re-explain about the abyss, Miss. The what? Ab. Abyss. Yes. Abyss. Ah, uh, the yes. Yes. Abyss. 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 Right. The, yes. the 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 flow. Yes. Okay. So, like I said, okay, abyss is just an example of flow regime that you normally found in river 
okay, in in river, okay. So eddy is okay. You see, when you when you flow water, um, naturally water will flow in a one direction, but for eddy, okay, it will not flow in one direction, okay. It will it will somehow flow in rotation mode. Why is it flowing in rotation mode? Is because perhaps okay there is some disturbance on the bed. Okay, there is some disturbance that creates the obstruction, and therefore instead of flowing smoothly, okay, it somehow U-turn. Okay, it's somehow flowing in a rotation mode. Another reason for that, okay, could be attributed, okay, could be factored by velocity. If you have too high a velocity, okay, instead of forcing the fluid to flow in a straight path, okay, you will just uh, create a path that is actually, you know, um, uh, in rotation mode, okay? So you can actually observe it um, if you wash your hand on the sink, okay? If you open the, the pipe very fast, okay? It will create some this uh, rotation movement. So that is actually eddy. And in real life, okay? Uh, if you observe in the, in, the, in the river, okay? If you see there is a place where, you know, uh, there's a, like a, there is evidence of eddy. You see that the water kind of uh, rotating. If you observe on the on the on the on the on the bed of the river, you can see that down there it has either a, a trench or a hole, okay, or another obstruction. Maybe there is a huge uh, boulder. There is a huge rock that will op that obstructs the linear or smooth uniform path of the fluid. That is the reason why eddy is formed. I hope I do answer your question. Okay, miss. Thank you, miss. Okay. Uh, okay, thank you, miss. Uh, well, maybe that is the last question for this seminar. Yes. For those who want to discuss again with miss, you can contact the email. Yes. Email from Miss Elie. Yes. And before we ending this seminar, we will take some picture. So for all participants, you can open your video and we will take some screenshot for this. Okay. Wait. Okay, semua bisa hidupkan kameranya. Kita akan coba mengambil sebuah. Bisa pun tidak sebentar. Oke, okay. Oke, okay. one, two, three. Okay, one more. Wait. One, two. Your hand is fist <laughs> for this. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you, guys. And thank you for Miss Ali. Thank you, IR, before for having end, me. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much. Oh, and before I end today activity, I want to say to Miss Ali for the affability of time. Always healthy for you, Miss. I also thanks for all church student participants. Yeah, and thank also, you, participants. Thank you, Miss Ali. Uh, yes, and no also, problem. thank you, Miss. I am very happy because I have 85 participants in my in my university I only have 8 participants so yeah this is like a huge crowd <laughs> Thank you so much I appreciate it so much thank you thank you Thank you and don't forget, thank you yes. don't forget also say thanks for youtuber viewer and don't forget to like and share and subscribe of course Oh yes definitely <laughs> Cuz now we live in YouTube Oh, okay, okay, yeah. right. And okay, everyone, thank you and goodbye. <laughs>
Bye. Take care all. Bye. 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 Recap. Okay, bye. Saya leave ya. Bye. 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 Subscribe. You next time. Agus, Agus. Mar, 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 mar. Yo, langsung. Assalamualaikum. Dan keluar kan? Oh guys, selamat. Halo, okay, next Agus. pembicaraan selanjutnya diserahkan kepada Yo.